was. Was. All right, Farmersville fans, we apologize. We had uh, some serious technical difficulties trying to get the audio up and streaming, but I think we are good to go at this point. Technology. Gonna check that. Right, Jaron, technology is frustrating. All right, so we uh, apparently just now finally got the audio up and running on our live stream here. So therefore, uh, we got a lot to talk about, right, Jaron? My name is Mr. G. I am the AV director here yes. at Farmersville. Thank you, Jaron. Farmersville High School, and we are trying to bring all the live streams we can to you at this point. Lady Farmers in the by district playoffs up against Dallas Lincoln Lady Tigers. As you can see by the score, the Lady Tigers have jumped out to a pretty commanding lead, 13 to three. The Lady Tigers come into tonight's matchup with a nine and one overall record. TJ Amex gets the drive on that one and scores two for the Lady Farmers. Brings them to five. TJ. That was a great shot, TJ. My guest commentator is Jaron McTee. Three for Dallas Lincoln. Number three, Grace Spencer makes that. And Grace Spencer comes with the takeaway. Gray Spencer is feeling it, drains another three, and that puts Dallas Lincoln up 19 to five. A steal by the Lady Tigers, tries to get it back in bounds. Farmersville takes over, gets the pass to TJ Amix, goes a little bit beyond her, tries to get back in the game and taken away again by the Lady Tigers. Pass underneath the basket, and number 21 for Lincoln makes that. Again, Dallas Lincoln takes a commanding lead, 21 to five, over the Lady Farmers with just three minutes left in in the first quarter. Oh no! We've got a foul on the play called on number three, Gracie Spencer. That's her first personal, first team foul. That gets Farmersville take the ball out of bounds on the right-hand side. So it's just me at the commentating table, and I'm also trying to make sure everything goes well with the live stream, get that all set up. I got a great crew working uh, for me uh, tonight. The ball passed underneath. It goes to Kylie McGee. Gets her own rebound, tries to put up the shot, shot again, and gets there's a foul called on the Lady Tigers. Alexia. Riley, Kylie McGee goes to the line for two shots. Making the baskets at the free throw line is going to be key for the Lady Farmers to stay in this game, that's for sure. Got a substitution for Dallas Lincoln coming in. Good try. Again, as I mentioned, the Lady Tigers coming in with a 9-1 record. First place in District 13-4A. Kylie. And we've got a lane violation by Dallas Lincoln. They get to reshoot that shot. The Lady Farmers, if you have been following them, played Friday night against Community for a district uh, playoff to see who played tonight's I matchup. Agree. Uh, I agree too, Jaron. Kylie McGee unsuccessful on the free throws. The rebound by Dallas Lincoln. Grace pops it out to number 20 for the Lady Tigers. And trying to bring the threes in. The Lady Tigers really trying to bring the score up. A lot of, a lot of offensive rebounds for the Lady Tigers, but picked up by the Lady Farmers. 
And Alexia Hernandez tries to drive to the basket. Thought somebody was there, and unfortunately, it was a ladies' Higer in a white uniform, not the purple uniform. The Lady Farmers are going to take control of that ball. Ball knocked out of bounds by Lincoln. Just over two yeah, minutes so. left in the first quarter of play. Say that again, Jared. I missed it. Good hustle. Yeah, absolutely. Good hustle by the Lady Farmers on, on our side, both sides of the ball. Really trying to defend against a, a very quick Dallas Lincoln team. Lincoln going for three, not able to make it. Steps out of bounds, trying to recover oh, no. the ball. Lady Farmers gain control on the baseline. Randy Fetty gets the ball. Nobody's on her, so she's just going to take it up the court. A three by Riley Blankenship off the back of the rim. Lincoln takes control of the ball. Intercepted by Riley Blankenship. A good defense on that side of the ball. Great ball movement. Dribbling by Ashton Kelly. Kylie McGee takes that shot and was looking for an after-the-shot foul, but nothing was called. Ball goes out of bounds, knocked out of bounds by the Lady Tigers. Lady Farmers will have it under the basket. Oh, no. Minute 23 left in the first quarter, as you can see. Dallas Lincoln coming out with a commanding lead, 21-5. to Rendy Fetty gets that pass in and puts another two points on the board for the Lady Farmers. Good shot. Rendy. Scoreboard still hasn't changed yet, but should be seven. Still don't have the right score. Somebody's trying. We got a sub trying to come in here. Trying to get I some agree. indication. Yeah, absolutely. The Lady, Ti Lady Tigers have the ball on the underneath the basket. I don't understand. Maybe Jaron knows what's going on. In fact, he's probably got a button on there about technology no. that uh, we're not getting the right score. It should be seven for the Lady Farmers, not five. Just under a minute left to play. The Lady Tigers is going to go ahead and stall. They're up by 20, well, up by... 16 right now. The Lady Tigers controlling the ball on this end of the court. Nice interception attempt by Alexia Hernandez. Lincoln goes ahead and gets control over it again and just going ahead and trying to run the clock out. Pop the ball out to their shooter, Grace Spencer. And Grace Spencer drains another three, puts it up 24 to five, just under 20 seconds left in the game. In the, first quarter technology yeah that's right technology they finally gave the lady farmers their two points back the ball taken away by Dallas Lincoln coach Hogue on that side of the court trying to get to Alexi Hernandez let her know get that on that ball and time runs out the first quarter of play Dallas lady Lincoln lady Tigers 24 the Farmersville lady farmers oh, no. seven Again, my name is Mr. G, and I'm the AV director at Farmersville High School, and we have the opportunity sometimes when uh, we're, we're trying to get some crew together. Uh, today was a difficult one with not having school on Monday, but also we got tons of activities that are going on all across the state with all our different groups, and, and uh, it came down I to agree. me to be commentating, but I'm lucky enough to have uh, the best commentator at my side, the best color commentator, uh, Jaron McTee, Sitting right here to my right, he's the one that you're going to hear make some random comments throughout the game. But uh, he's got a lot on his computer, ready to rock and roll. Right, Jaron? Yes. See what I mean? Fantastic.
All right, and I am uh, doing double slash triple duty right now this evening for this game. Uh, I've got uh, a, cr a crew of four people up and uh, five, I guess, uh, that are taking care of things uh, upstairs uh, behind me. And uh, I'm commentating and trying to make sure that the live stream is still going smoothly. So they're doing an excellent job in the booth. Certainly appreciate those students stepping up. It's kind of a last minute call in uh, for today's game. A quick turnaround from Friday to Monday. So we got a foul on the play. Only the fourth foul that's been called in the game so far. That's number oh, no. 10, Riley Blankenship takes that foul. That's her first personal. <coughs> and that's the second team foul. Oh, no. Yeah, I agree. We got a lot of ground we got to make up in this quarter, that's for sure. That's Kayla Crowder to the line for two shots for the Lady Tigers. Substitution for the Lady Farmers into the game number one, Kim Hernandez. Kim. Let's go, Kim. Absolutely. Right now, the Lady Farmers are trying to look for their player that might be able to, to start to get hot and start draining some threes. <coughs> Apologize there, ladies and gentlemen. They're still getting over bronchitis. So trying to not cough on the mic, but just missed that one. Riley Blankenship taking control of the ball, but swiped out of bounds by Demaya Freeman. Oh no. Lady Farmers take over control on the side. Well, ball passed off by Gally Matthews and right into the hands of Dallas Lincoln. On the drive, not able to finish the layup, but got the foul on the, and it was a good try. Foul on the play. I believe that was Kim Hernandez who takes that foul. That's her first personal and third team foul. Kayla Crowder is at the line for two shots. Oh, no. I was talking to Coach Hogue earlier today about tonight's game, and, and of course, she knew going into this, uh, the Lady Tigers are a very strong basketball team with a lot of depth and uh, a lot of skill across the bench, and so they knew the Lady Farmers would have to play their absolute best to, to keep up with them. And right now, uh, Dallas Lincoln commanding lead for this game, but the Lady Farmers trying to get something going Playing some strong defense, being able to intercept several of the passes. The drive by number one, Demaya Freeman. Freeman looking for a foul on that one, didn't get the call. Kim Hernandez driving it down, gets it to Gally Matthews. Gally Matthews gets the Good two shot. on the layup and the foul. Gally. Foul called on number 11 for Lincoln. <coughs> Puts Gally Matthews to the line for one shot. Lincoln takes control of the ball, gets a drive to the basket. Maybe a little bit of a European step towards the basket on that one, but we've got full court press by the Lady Tigers. And because of the jump ball, they call the travel on the play, not a jump ball. So the Lady Tigers take over the ball on the baseline. Definitely the Farmers fans oh, no. a little upset about that call. Six and a half minutes left in the first half. We've got a drive by 
Crowder. And it looks like, not sure who that was. Maybe Rindy Fetty took that foul. Stepped in the lane, but just a little too quick on the movement. Got called on the blocking foul. Rindy with her hand know. straight up, not able to. Yeah, I don't know either, Jaron. Uh, did the right thing, went straight up in the air and was able to get past her. Lincoln Tigers for another two. It's Lady Tigers playing tough defense, but Lady Farmers break through the defense and Rindy Fetty gets a short, easy two and a Good timeout shot. called by the Lady Tigers. Rindy. Coach Greer pretty upset about uh, something that he saw on the court over there. Uh, and certainly one of these situations where uh, Dallas Lincoln is playing strong basketball with 28 points up by 17 over the Lady Farmers in the first half, but certainly want to uh, make sure that his Lady Tigers do not uh, rest at any point. Coach Hogue over in the uh, in her huddle trying to talk to the Lady, Lady Farmers about uh, getting some defense set up trying to make sure they're closing the gaps on the defensive side and then getting the ball in the basket on the offensive side. You can tell by her hand gestures and movements and uh, what needs to happen on that end. Got a little bit of momentum by the Lady Farmers, four points to match the four points of the Lady Tigers over the last two minutes. Let's see if the Lady Farmers can keep this momentum going. Zamaya Lewis brings the ball down for, oh, correction, that's number 12 for the Lady Tigers. Nice ball movement by Lincoln. Gets an easy oh, layup. Yeah. Two brings it up to 30. Lincoln still playing full court press, which leaves Kylie McGee wide open for an easy layup. And Coach Greer is not happy with his Lady Tigers. Lady Farmers did a great job breaking down that full court press right there. Good shot. Yeah, it was a good shot, Jaron. Thank you, appreciate it. Yes. Dallas Lincoln controlling the ball on their end of the court. And it looks like we've got a, an offensive push by number 21 for the Lady Tigers. That is their fourth team foul. Lady Farmers take over on the baseline. Oh, right there underneath, great ball movement by the Lady Farmers and Gail Galley Matthews. I, correction, I apologize, that was Kylie McGee. Good shot. Yeah, Kylie McGee was right in the line and Kylie. Coach Hogue is yelling at her players saying, hey, this is what we were talking about. This is what we've got available. They just broke the lead down to only 15. If we can keep that up with a rebound right there. Grace Freeman, uh, I'm sorry, Grace Spencer for the Lady Tigers, not able to make that three. And Kim Hernandez driving down, gets pushed out of bounds. And a foul called on the Lady Tigers. That's number 12 takes that foul. Lady Farmers with possession on the side. Trying to see if they can run that same offense. Lady Tigers doing a great job with the pressure on defense. But as they're collapsing to the ball, they're leaving a player open every once in a while. And that's what Coach Hogue is trying to get her Lady Farmers to see. And there's a pass underneath the basket. Lost off the shoe. And they call the blocking foul. Called on Alexia Hernandez. That's her first personal fifth team foul. Yeah. 
What's up, Jaron? You got the good, good mojo going down on your end of the court, hopefully. The Lady Tigers not able to converge on that play, but tried to control the ball, but didn't have it. Called for a double dribble. The Lady Farmer is gonna take over on the side. Three minutes, just over three minutes left in the first half. The Lady Farmers have a nice little run of six points here to the Lady Tigers. Four points. You got a foul on the play called on Dallas Lincoln. Number 12 takes that foul. That's her second personal. Good to have so. Almost lost it on that one, but Alexia able to corral it in. Finding a spot to drive, gets the drive. Blocking foul called on the Lady Tigers. She was not able to get herself set. And that's number 13, <laughs> takes that foul. That puts Alexia Hernandez to the line for two shots. Makes the first one. As we're setting up for the next free throw, do want to send a shout out to uh, an alumni who's come to the game tonight to help us out with the live stream. Like I said, I was scrambling for some crew, but Ivy Dupree has made her way back into the live stream program. She was one of our main technical directors last year, uh, graduated last year and came back to help us out tonight. So certainly appreciate her being here to kind of add support and make sure, you know, basically just calm me down because it's been crazy. Uh, that shot blocked off the rim and lost that to the Lady Farmers with a turnover. And then the Dallas Lincoln tried to intercept it, knocked it out of bounds. I agree. Lady Farmers set it back up. You agree that I'm stressed out or you agree that with the, with the play? Yes. Yeah, I, that's what I figured. You agree that I'm stressed out, Jaren. I, I got you. That's all right. That's the way it goes. You know, you know my faces. You know how it is. Lady Tigers take over possession on that one. A foul called on the play. Blocking foul by the Lady Farmers. The bench calling for some defensive play. And they get the defensive rebound. Some nice dribbling. That was Ashton Kelly Good hustle. <laughs> trying to, yeah, great hustle, trying to bring the ball down the court and just uh, mis misread the movement of her teammate, threw it out of bounds, saw that she was running towards the corner, thought she was going to keep going and didn't. Kayla Crowder bringing the ball down slow, trying to eat up some clock. The Lady Farmers are on a eight to four run right now trying to take away some of this lead that the Lady Tigers have, have amassed here in this first half. I oh, agree. ball lost out of bounds by the Lady Tigers. Not able to handle it as she got it back in bounds, but not able to handle it, the Lady Farmers, and they knock it out of bounds. So Lincoln keeps it underneath the basket. Substitutions for Farmersville back in the game, TJ Amix and Sierra Kelly, two of the two seniors on the squad. Offensive rebound by the Lady Tigers, not able to convert, but get the next rebound, and that is Demaya Freedom tries to take it back, sorry, Freeman tries to take it back up and is fouled on the way. Yes. Well, yeah, I agree with that. So Freeman going to the line for two shots. Lady Farmer is doing a great job here in the last four minutes trying to get the ball, the points on their end. Freeman makes that first one substitution for the Lady Farmers back in the game, 32, Rindy Fetty. And also back in the game, number 23, Ashton Kelly. 
Coach Hogue just trying to rotate the players out as much as possible to keep them fresh legs. Dallas Lincoln, a fast-moving team. You want to be able to try to keep up with them and run with them. Kelly not able to handle the pass on that one. It turns it over to Dallas Lincoln. A whole lot of contact underneath, but no calls. And to Good the try. Lady Farmers' favor, Sierra Kelly gets the pass, passes it off to underneath TJ Amix. Tries to get the drive, looking for a foul to be called. No foul, just knocked out of bounds. Go defense. Gets the ball into TJ. Amix throws it up and gets the two. 40 seconds left right here. Lady Farmers Good fans shot. just trying to tell him, keep TJ. on the defense, and they get the rebound on that one. Alexia Hernandez doing a great job handling the ball, gets it off to Ashton Kelly. Knocked out of bounds by the Lady Tigers, and Kelly's taking it out on the side. 25 seconds left in the half. Rindy's trying to find someone. Looked like could have been an over the back there. TJ gets it into Sierra Kelly. Sierra Kelly gets position on it. Unable to finish the shot. Picked up by the Lady Tigers. Freeman trying to make it down to her end of the court. Posts up for a three. Pops it out to their main three-point shooter. No good. And the end of one half of play. The Lady Farmers have a nice run there. Last four minutes of the game and score uh, a, 10 points in the last four minutes and, and now going away to half with a respectable 31 to 19. You can see Coach Fetty is over on that side of the court trying to talk to the refs about some issues that are going on, but looks like there might be, looks like might, there might be somebody that's uh, got a question about their fans and so bringing somebody down to join uh, my man, Jaron McTee. McTee over there. What are you doing, bruh? Calling some issues? Yeah, the referee's concerned about you, bruh? No. <laughs> That's right. You got, you got nothing going on. You're doing the right thing, Jaron. Excellent job. So, as you can see right there at the bottom of your screen, that's our crew for tonight's matchup. A big shout out to our student crew that's running the show tonight. I've got uh, Devlin Dalton, who's running the switcher. Ivy Dupree, who's come back from uh, one of our alumni, who stepped in to help out. Uh, Giselle Duran, who's running a camera, and new on the camera. We got Yari. Yari is running the camera on the far side. So we have nine minutes to take a break and check on everything and come back after this. We'll see you in just a little bit. No. Causing so many problems, bro. Turn. You want to turn? You can't see? It is.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back in the action here at All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got a special treat. Oh, a big hard foul on the play by uh, Ashton Kelly on that one. Sends Freeman to the ground, sliding into a videographer that's underneath the basket right there. But uh, that's going to put her to the line for two shots. And as I was just saying, we got a special treat. Uh, Jensen McTee has decided to join us. What's up, Jensen? So we got, uh, I got two McTees in this broadcast. Man, I am some kind of special person, that's for sure. So uh, Jensen, for those that are joining in uh, with us, tell us uh, when you graduated and what you played while you were here at Farmersville. I graduated in 22 and I played volleyball, basketball, softball, and tennis. Nice. So it kind of made your rounds all the way around. Yep. All seasons had some sort of activity going on. Yep, yep. So Freeman misses the first of the two shots right there. And misses the second one. But followed up by uh, Grace Spencer. They're the, her leading oh, scorer for the Lady Tigers right now. So, so far, Jensen, what do you think about uh, the Lady Farmers in tonight's matchup? Um, they've made a pretty good comeback in the second quarter. I mean, yeah, second quarter for sure. But I think they're still fighting pretty hard. But coming in in fourth against the first place team is pretty hard also. Well, yeah, I talked to Coach Hogue yesterday and then again this morning on a drive by the Lady uh, Lady Tigers. That's Elder makes a layup on that one. And I was talking to Coach Hogue and, you know, of course she knew. I mean, in fact, uh, oh, nice drive by Lexi Hernandez and answers the two uh, with a layup. And uh, that's really what we've got to have happening throughout this game. You know that the Lady Tigers are going to be driving the ball. They're going to be moving the ball around real fast. Yep. They've, they've got a couple of people shooting uh, the outside. Uh, Jaron McTee trying to tell me how to do my job over there. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. It's okay, Jaron. Is that better? Down. Oh, down. You're too loud. I got you, bro. All right, no problem. How about that? So, uh, ball uh, knocked out of bounds, or I guess, uh, yeah. Knocked out of bounds and taken over by the Lady Tigers. Kim Hernandez jumps in and grabs the basketball on that one and gets a jump ball, which means the Lady Tigers are going to retain possession under the basket, but the possession arrow will go back to the Lady Farmers on the next one. But anyhow, talking to Coach Hogue yesterday and today, she knew going into tonight's matchup that uh, Dallas Lincoln was a strong team. Uh, they're fast. They got a lot of players. They got a deep bench. Yes. Uh, so, and, you know, in, in, in that district, 13 yes. 4A, uh, you know, you finish first place in that district in basketball, you know you're strong. Yeah. Uh, all those teams in, in District 13 oh, 4A no. are pretty strong on the basketball court. Yes. So that's Elder oh, at no. the line, makes the first of, yeah, I agree. Jaron, oh no. What are we going to do about this? So, again, Coach Hogue knew going into this it was going to be a tough matchup. And so far, the Lady Farmers have have definitely uh, gotten back in the game. That second quarter turned everything around for the Lady Farmers. Yes. I would. There was a ball knocked out of bounds by Dallas Lincoln, and Coach Hogue Time. decides to call a timeout. She wants 30 seconds to talk to her team about the way they were setting up on that full-court press. I will say it's kind of interesting, and what I've been noticing right now, and, and you may have seen this too, uh, Jensen, but they need. the um, the Lady Tigers have a strong four, full court press on the Water. on this end of the court, but once the Lady Farmers get past, past half, half court, court there, yeah. there's no one, and yeah. so that's the key. And I know Coach Hogue and Coach Fetty were talking about that at halftime because they see Chow. it. Yes, because I don't have that much basketball knowledge, <laughs> and I'm seeing it. So if you can get past, yeah. quick enough past half court, you're going to have a layup available, and that's yep. what they're trying to do. Jaron over there is trying to tell everybody that they need water, and you need water. Jaron, is that what you're saying? You need water and you need a towel? Is that what's happening? You've been working too hard? Relax. Oh, you're telling me to relax? They need water. Tell them relax. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll pass that on to Coach Hogue for sure. <laughs> tell those girls to relax. It's okay. You play your game. 
Oh, Kim Hernandez having to pick up her dribble, get stuck behind, see if we can get past after the 10 seconds. Barely make it. Nice drive by Alexia. And a shot by Sierra Kelly goes off the back of the rim. The drive by Dallas Lincoln. Kind of a little Good bit shot. out of control, but uh, Lady Farmer is unable to get set on that one and draw the blocking foul. The biggest key that we've got is we've got to make shots like that. We're not going to be able yes. to be in this game if we're if we're missing uh, those easy easy layups because we're not going to get that many easy shots nope. with a yes. team like this. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, compared to uh, Friday night's matchup. Uh, the Lady Farmers have, have definitely been putting the ball in the hoop a lot more. Well, Friday's matchup was was a little uh, kind of all over the place. I mean, they did what they needed to do to win the game for sure, and they dominated uh, the community the whole game. I good, mean, good. the end of the first quarter, I yes. don't know. If, did you see any of that game? No, I went to the softball scrimmage, yeah? okay. and it started snowing. So Wait, bad, it bad was decision. snowing? Yes. Where? In um, – Where were they at? I just went blank. Yeah. I'm trying to uh, think. Anna. Where the, oh, Anna. and Anna. That's yep. right. That's right. I did hear about that. Yep. My sister lives in Melissa. Mm -hmm. And uh, she told me that they saw flurries. Yes. I but, you know, spring sports in Texas. I mean, uh -huh. come on. Yep. You got anything outside, and you're going to be struggling with the weather. Yep. I promised a couple of girls I would go, and if I would have known it was going to rain or oh, snow, yeah. I oh, would yeah. not no, have gone. No, thank you. Ball nope. knocked out of bounds by Dallas Lincoln on that throw-in right there. A lot of activity on this end of the court, a lot of screaming and yelling because they're trying to figure out what position they want to get everybody into. Lady Farmer is stacked up on that throw in. Sierra Kelly wide open in the middle. And this was what we were talking about. If you can get past that half court, you got a real good chance of making a nice drive in on the basket. Sierra Kelly puts that shot up, unable to make it, but draws the foul and puts good her try. to the line for two shots. Number 32 for Dallas Lincoln takes that foul. So as Jensen was mentioning, um, softball was uh, starting their kind of preseason play yep. uh, on Friday. It went out there, so missed an interesting game. I'll just tell you that. It was 10 to nothing at the end of the first quarter. Nice. 10 to nothing in a basketball game. It's, it was just a crazy score. I mean, community yeah. just couldn't get the ball in the basket. Yeah. I bet you both Farmersville and community probably shot the ball 15 times. <laughs> I mean, easy. Yeah. And uh, yeah, maybe even 20 times. And yeah. they, just, they just couldn't get it in the hoop. Oh. And then they, in the second quarter, they came back a little bit, but the Lady Farmers just, they also did the same. Ashton Kelly trying to drive in the basket, get a lot of, knocked around a lot underneath the basket there, but no calls. I, I will say, as far as the referees for this game go, Oh, hard drive by Grace Spencer for the Lady Tigers and draws the blocking yes. foul. Uh, number 15, Kylie McGee takes that foul. Puts Freeman to the line for, I'm mean, sorry, Spencer to the line for two shots. She's their strongest shooter and definitely the leading scorer of the game today. Makes the first one. They need. As I was going to say, uh, the Lady Farmers Fight. did a great job uh, staying with community and coming back and just putting it to them and, and uh, just fight. got out in front of that first quarter and just stayed in front. And community never had a shot. Now, I, from what I understand, they need fight. the girls need to fight? Yeah, okay, as long as you mean like, like on the basketball court, they need to play harder, not actually physically <laughs> fight. That would kind of be a problem. <laughs> That's all right. Oh, Rindy with some movement. Oh, and the ball comes flying over to this end and almost <laughs> tags Jaron in the face. Does knock out his earbuds. Gets pretty excited on that one. <laughs> the referee's coming over checking on Jaron. He's fine. He's fine. Don't even worry about it. He's fine. <laughs> Well, that's, that, that was the call. The referees came over at halftime and asked that somebody come down and sit with Jaron just to make sure that didn't happen. And sure enough, that ball came flying over here and tagged Jaron right in the side of the head. <laughs> maybe uh, maybe uh, knocked a little bit more sense into him. I stopped it. Airplane. 
airplane. It felt like an airplane? Or maybe. Hmm. Kim Hernandez gets a little too far under the basket, tries to put that one up. Not able to make it, but Lincoln gets the rebound and throws it out of bounds. So the Lady Farmers taking control on their side. Down by 19 with 3.50 left in the third quarter. A strong defensive play and a drive by Freeman. Easy layup. Again, as I was going to mention earlier, a very physical basketball game. This one is fast and physical, and the refs yeah. are letting them play. It's they're calling it. I think very fair Good. both directions. Uh, calling the, the big the big fouls on <laughs> Jensen doesn't agree. <laughs> 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 That's okay. That's okay. Very good. Timeout called by Lady Farmers. But uh, very good. yeah, you think they're doing a good job, Jensen? I think they're doing a good good job. Yeah, they're doing pretty good. But uh, kind of equal amount of fouls. Not a lot of fouls by either team being called. Uh, just letting them play this out and, and seeing who can uh, kind of battle underneath the best. So yes. So sometimes that's good, sometimes not. But, yep. you know, again, another thing that Coach Oga, I saw okay. they were watching film uh, earlier today, and, uh, and one of the things she was talking about is it's going to be a physical basketball game, and they got to be ready. Yep. And that game, you know, they've had a couple of games in our district that that are physical uh, but not at this speed mm, yeah. i don't think we've got a couple of teams that might play but this is just a different speed no. of the game so again but one of the big things i'll say is is i'm very impressed with how lady farmers have kept up with them so far yes i mean i know they're they're uh, down by yes. 21 but um you know by the number of shots that the lady tigers have been taking and compared to the number of shots lady farmers are taking I mean, this is a it's a good score so far. Yep, I agree. Do you agree, Jaron? <laughs> is that a McTee thing? No, I just no. said it because I, I told him he said it a lot. He does say it a lot. And I appreciate it sometimes. At least he's not <laughs> calling me old and bald. <laughs> All right, he's from Lady Farmers throwing it in from the side. Ooh, almost lose that ball to the backcourt, but Riley Blankenship able to pick it up. Pass it off to Kim Hernandez. Kim Hernandez looking for a three, but finds Rindy Fetty instead. And she loses out of bounds. Lady Tigers take over on the baseline. Good try. It was a good try. Red did a nice job on that Rindy. one, right? Rindy, you actually called her Rindy? I think that's the first time, Jaron. He's been calling her Red all season. Lady Tigers just holding on to the ball until there's an attack from the Lady Farmers, which didn't happen. Spencer makes a drive into the basket and just gets slapped by number 32. They're saying Rindy Fetty got that foul. I think oh, no. that's her second personal, but I'm not positive. Redhead. But <laughs> that's it. Spencer at the line for two shots makes the first one. Second one in and out, picked up by Kim Hernandez. Tries to toss it to Rindy Fetty. Rindy Fetty just boxes it out of, out of trouble. Riley Blankenship does the same thing, slaps that ball back in bounds, but unfortunately goes right into the hands of the Lady Tigers. Stop. I think we could have a lot more fouls called on us, or oh. for us, if we would just block out. That would, yep. that's a big, big thing. If you would just block out, they would go over your back all, every time. You get that yeah, there's, I, I, and I totally agree with you on that one. There's Instead no question because they, that you can see underneath the basket. Rindy. But a nice pass by Rindy over to Riley Blankenship. Back to Rindy Fetty for two off the backboard and off the rim. Cover. The Lady Tigers definitely like to jump up and try to grab that ball over the top. And yeah, yeah you're right. If they're, under cover. Yeah. Instead of trying to out jump, just blocks, box them out and – they're, you're going to get that call all day long. Yeah, Jaron said they need to stop. They need to pa stop passing them to cover. Yeah, you're absolutely right. A three by the Lady Tigers takes them to 49 on the scoreboard. That was definitely the biggest thing I learned having to fill in as a post last year towards the end yeah, of the season. Yeah, right. 
that obviously I know I'm not going to out jump anybody. So, bucks yeah, and out, yeah. them trying to jump over you. I got the call every single time. We got a foul called on number one, Demaya Freeman. They're going to go ahead. That's her third personal, so they're going to go ahead and pull her for a little bit, take a little break. Technology. What's wrong with your technology, Jaren? Kim Hernandez trapped there against the baseline, throws it off one of the Lady Tigers and reset. We do have Caitlin McCray who's come into the game. Get some fresh legs on the court for the Lady Farmers. Kim Hernandez looking at, a, at TJ Amix and just throws it over out of her reach over the top and the Lady Tigers take over. They need. You can definitely tell that Kim Hernandez is, is struggling and, and uh, she's been working hard all game running up and down this court. Coach Hogue is trying to switch all the girls out as quick as she can. Try to keep them with fresh legs. The air ball by the Lady Tigers goes right into the hands of TJ Amex. Riley Blankenship trying to grab the ball and I'm not able to control it. The Lincoln fans get a little they bit a, a little bit crazy for that one. The ref definitely called it. Everybody saw it. But uh, there's a big O from the that side of the court. Mm, yeah. They need and a timeout. They, they need a timeout, Jaron, you think? Yeah, maybe so. We got a minute left in the third quarter. 49-22. Water. They need timeout. Tried water. to save it. Not able to grab onto that ball. And Clear. Lady Farmer is going to take over possession on the side. 51 seconds left in the third quarter. Good try. Dallas Ashton. Lincoln has pretty much dominated this half. Keep running. Lady Farmer is trying to maintain control and taken away by the Lady Tigers. Good shot. Ball lost out of bounds. Oh. But deflected off of, excuse me, deflected off of the Lady Farmers and uh, looks like somebody for Dallas Lincoln maybe got hit in the knee. Maybe they hit knee a little hard there. Number 12, seems like she's okay. Moving a little bit slow under the basket though. Tries to pop out, Riley Blankenship knocks it out of bounds, interrupts that pass. 20 seconds left on the clock for the third quarter. Have Number 11 for Lady Tigers takes that foul on the push. Lady Farmers take it back out. We got full court press by the Lady Tigers. Knocked out of bounds. Farmersville keeps it on the baseline. Switching up who's throwing it in. You got Caitlin McRae having an opportunity to get the ball down to Riley Blankenship. Five seconds left on the clock. Ball knocked out of bounds by the Lady Tigers. Just in front of the bench for Farmersville. Caitlin gets it in to TJ Amex over to Riley Blankenship. Pops oh. the three right on line, but just short of the rim. And that's yeah. the end of three quarters of play. And we got a score of Lady Farmers 22, Lady Tigers 49.
Bye. <laughs> All right, we're back live, Jaron. Be careful what you say. <laughs> OMG. Uh, uh, yes, I agree. I agree totally. So in that uh, interim on that break between the quarters, uh, one of the refs came over and was giving uh, Jensen a hard time about that last ball that almost hit Jaron in the face. But the t throw in by the Lady Farmers intercepted by uh, the Lady Tigers, number five, our Jayla Elder, and makes the layup and draws the foul. So I saw that Coach Greer had all of his starters sitting on the bench there the last part of that quarter. Uh, but most of them have come back out to start this fourth quarter. I'm sure he wants to go ahead and get this game out of the way or, get, or out of touch uh, for the Lady Farmers and then probably will let the rest of his bench come in and play a little bit, get some experience in the playoffs. Foul called by the Lady Tigers, number two. Crowder takes that foul. Oh, no. Lady Farmers take it on the sideline. Passed into Kim Hernandez. We got six team fouls for both sides. Each team will be in the in the uh, bonus. Kim Hernandez loses control of that. And tries to throw it up in the air, but uh, Elder just a little bit too tall and too quick on that one, but gets called for the travel. Turns it over. The Lady Farmers take over on the baseline. At this point, if Lady Farmers want to have any chance, they've got to start a run right now. A lot of hand check-in done by the Lady Tigers, and it worked. Able to take the ball away, and Crowder able to get that and put it in the basket. Oh, no. Coach Hogue not pleased with the play of her guards coming down, especially the freshman, Alexia Hernandez. She's telling her, look, you can't get into that dribbling battle with their defense. They're quick. They move too fast. you got to pass it off. You want to get past that, that half court line like we talked about. If you can get that ball quick past the half court line, you're going to have an opportunity to be able to, uh, to make a play underneath. I just realized that I turned Jensen's mic off and didn't turn it back on. So... <laughs> If you've made any comments this half, uh, nobody heard them, and I apologize. It's all right. <laughs> so for those of you that may be uh, just checking in or didn't hear me talk about it, I have the uh, great pleasure of having two McTees down here commentating with me. Jaron McTee has been uh, taking in and color commentating for us uh, for a lot of these uh, uh, games recently on the basketball side. And You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> And Jensen, a uh, former lady farmer herself on, on pretty much every side of every part of athletics for girls' <laughs> athletics. Did you run track ever? Junior high. In junior high? All right, all right. That's good enough. I wasn't very much a track guy either. Nope. Ball done. knocked out of bounds by Dallas Lincoln. Farmers keep it. What's that? I was done after junior high. Yeah, I hear you. I, I just don't like running. Nope, it's not at all. Basketball was already too much. Yeah, I feel ready. you on that one, <laughs> for sure. You're bored? Track is bored. Track, uh, is, track bored. is bored. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That's yeah, right. You, that's right. Sierra Kelly throws one up, goes offside rim, but gets her own rebound and lays it in for two. Great follow on that one. Again, another thing that the Lady Farmers uh, are, are doing much better in this game is just staying underneath and trying to get the rebounds. Travel on the play, called on the Lady Tigers, and Farmersville will take over on the side. I would. Nice drive by Alexia Hernandez to get through the defense. Gets her own rebound, pops it oh. off to Kim, I'm sorry, Ashton Kelly. Not able to put it in, but Kim Hernandez comes back with some defense and knocks it out of bounds. Jaron getting super excited on that end because the ball's coming right at his face. Time. Out. Oh, J 
Sharon is thinking they I need to call a timeout out at this point. No. Lady Farmers trying to just set up the zone defense down on their end of the court, try to slow out, slow down the offense of the Lady Tigers. Ball intercepted and knocked out of bounds by Kim Hernandez. Lincoln keeping the ball on the baseline. Just under six minutes as Riley Blankenship Clear. comes into the game for the Lady Farmers. Dallas Lincoln commanded the courts during the third quarter. Lady Farmers did a nice job in the second quarter. Outscored the, the Lady Tigers and uh, brought the lead only down to 12 for Dallas Lincoln. And the Lady Tigers came out in that third quarter and just really put it to the Lady Farmers. Now up by 29. The drive on the play right there, a travel called. Um, that's Spencer, Grace Spencer, not too happy about that call, but her teammates remind her, hey, we're good, we're good. Just get back into the game, it's no problem. 53. Alexia Hernandez comes down, drives through the defense, pulls up. Shoots a shot. And knocks it out of bounds by the Lady Tigers. Farmersville keeps it under the basket. 519 left in the game. <laughs> Jaron, what are you looking at me for, bro? You got something to say? 53. What about 53? The score is 53? Yeah. Yeah, they have 53 on the scoreboard. Thanks for that information. You know, our fans can see that right here. I don't know if you know that or not, Jared. <laughs> yeah, I understand. In case they're listening and not watching, good job, Jared. Alexi Hernandez drew that foul underneath the basket. She goes to the line for two shots. First one off the side of the rim. Substitution for the Lady Tigers, number 12, coming back in the game. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, what about our score? Our score doesn't count? No. <laughs> nice. Alexi Hernandez makes the second of the two shots. Brings uh, Lady Farmers to 25. Dallas Lincoln able to get the ball in and down the court pretty quickly. A wide open under the basket, number 21 lays it in, another two for the Lady Tigers. Nice pass off by Alexia to TJ Amix. She's not able to get the shot to fall, but knocked out of bounds by tired. Dallas Lincoln. Substitution for the Lady Farmers. They're Back tired. in the game, Rindy Fetty and Jaren is correct. You can tell the Lady Farmers are tired. Uh, as I mentioned before, they're not used to this pace of a game. They knew coming in it was going to be fast. Uh, the Lady Tigers are going to be quick with their passes, and they have been. And the Lady Farmers have been do doing their best to try to keep up with them, no question. That ball bounces off the side of the rim, and Dallas Lincoln takes control of the rock, brings it down to their side of the court. And now they're trying to spread the off offense out and slow the clock down. Clear. No question, the Lady Tigers looking for a good shot. Had a drive on that one, not able to make it. Rebound picked up by the Lady Farmers. Riley Blankenship trying to get something started. Passes it off to Alexi Hernandez. Alexi Hernandez draws the foul. Oh, no. Our Jayla Elder for the oh, Lady no. Tigers is trying to reach in to smack that ball out of her hand, not able to do it, and gets called for the foul. So Alexi Hernandez goes to the line for a one and one. Good shot. And not able to make the first one. 
Tigers come down with the initial rebound, but lose control over it, and then picked up by her teammate. You can tell Lincoln is slowing everything down again, spreading out the offense. Trying to see what they can do to run some time off the clock and make sure they get a nice, they want a good play, good offensive move into the, into the basket. And drive by number 12, off the front of the rim, picked up by 32, not able to get the shot off. Alexi Hernandez able to drive through the traffic. Gets the ball out to Rindy Fetty. Looked like a little bit of a push off of number 21 for Lincoln, but timeout called by, Good try. by correction. I thought they said timeout, okay. but they said that ball's going to be out of bounds, knocked out of bounds by Lincoln. So Ashton Kelly throwing it in from the sidelines. Gets it in to Rindy Fetty. Rindy Fetty with a handoff to Kim Hernandez. Kim Hernandez trying to switch positions. Moving around to the other side of the court, nothing there. Looking for a way to pass the ball in. Gets it to Ashton Kelly. Ashton Kelly gets into the basket. A lot of traffic underneath and gets called for the block. Good try. Redhead. <laughs> Number 32 takes that foul for Dallas Lincoln. That puts Ashton Kelly to the line for two shots. Makes the first one. Substitutions for the Lady Tigers into the game number four. Kelly misses the second of the free throws. Rebounded by the Lady Tigers, brought down by number four, trying to get the offense spread out and started. A three by number 10, in and out. Rebound by Riley Blankenship, and 10 gets in too quick. Good that gets called for the foul. That's gonna be a one and one for Riley Blankenship. Uh, correction, that's gonna be two shots. Lady Farmers now in the double bonus. Blanket chip makes the first one. Two minutes, 19 seconds left in the game. Blanket chip off the back of the rim on the next one. Lady Tigers get the rebound. And I believe at this point, uh, with a shot, number 32 gets the left-handed lay-in, takes it to 57, puts the Lady Tigers up by 30. Go defense. Randy Fetty tries to pass it in. Galley Matthews there, unable to get it, interrupted by the Lady Tigers. They bring the ball back down to the court and reset their offense. Go defense. Coach Greer has done a nice job getting all his players into the game. Looks like everybody that's on the bench that's eligible or not injured uh, definitely came out and has uh, played some time, which of course is something you want to do if you're up by 30 in a playoff game. It's an opportunity to get everybody on your bench some, some postseason experience. Just a little, little different game in the postseason. And Jensen knows a little something about that. I got to turn your mic back on. Keep turning your mic off. <laughs> I apologize. All right. So you guys, had, we played volleyball for the Lady Farmers. Technology. And uh, I know at least two of the years you guys made it down to the, was it regional semifinals? Yes. Regional tournament, I guess. Yeah. Then softball. Were you playing softball? Yes. And they made it into the playoffs? Yes. Same thing, right? Regional All tournament? Uh, I think so. All four years. Yeah. Well, so I guess it would only be three because of COVID. Well, yeah, right. Because stupid COVID. Three 
by Rindy Fetty. Were you watching that, Jan? Did you pay attention to that one? Oh, no. You weren't watching. Not sure what happened on that last one. I think somebody got tagged. Yeah, it was a great shot by Rindy. Puts uh, Lady Farmers to 30 with 40 seconds left in the game. Down by 27. Dallas Lincoln just doing everything they can to try to try to move the ball around, and they are called for a travel. All of the starters are now on the bench for the Lady Tigers. Now they've got their, their subs into the game, to finish this one out with 30 seconds left. Up by 27, that certainly makes sense. Good move by Coach Greer. Lady Farmers trying to figure out a way to get as many points on the basket as they can. Nice shot by Alexi Hernandez, not able to make it fall. 12 seconds drive <laughs> by Lady Tigers. Good try. And call for a foul on that Alexia. one. Alexia. Well, as we were talking about before, and even Coach Hogue, who I talked to her yesterday and today, and she was talking to other players, and they knew this was going to be a tough match coming into it. I mean, yes. all across the board, uh, on paper and watching them on film, uh, Dallas Lincoln's a fast team. They can pass the ball, move it around. They've got yes. some shooters. They came out real strong. Grace Spencer was draining threes in that first quarter and put uh, the Lady Tigers up by quite a bit in that first quarter. And then uh, Lady Farmers did a great job coming back in the second quarter, yep. trying to make it a game. But then the Lady Tigers in the third quarter dominated again. So uh, they've just kind of been controlling the clock and controlling the – the game from this point forward, Lady Farmers just trying to uh, get an opportunity to get a couple more points oh, yeah. on the board, make this game respectable, but they should be proud for sure. They had a fantastic, fantastic season. They had a great uh, play-in game on Friday, did a great job, took care of community pretty easily, and uh, now they are uh, coming into the playoffs against a, a tough team, tough matchup right there with Dallas Lincoln. They were first place in their district, 13-4A. And uh, Lady Farmers do the best they can to try to put some points on the board, but end up uh, coming away on the on the uh, losing side of this game. But uh, should be proud of their season for yeah. sure. Yes, definitely. Definitely building. Coach Hogue is doing a great job building the program up. Been to the playoffs two years in a row now. And, uh, and this is something that we're looking forward to. Uh, for the future of, of Lady Farmer basketball, for sure. So I want to send a big shout-out to my production crew, uh, Devlin, Ivy, one of my uh, alumni, came back to help us out tonight. Uh, we were scrambling to try to get some crew together in this in this game since we don't have class on Mondays anymore. And uh, Giselle, uh, Yari, uh, had uh, help from Savvy May, one of my friends, uh, being able to, from Fine Arts on Main, able to come in and help us out. Uh, Dr. Gomez showed up for the game to help out a little bit. And then I had some wonderful guest commentators, the McTees right here talking. Uh, Jaron McTee doing a great job commentating and doing our color on a lot of the games this season. And Jensen stepped up, stepped down on the bottom part of the court and helped us out. So a big shout out to the Lady Farmers and a great season and a, a, a good challenge. Uh, did the best they could, but, but uh, just overmatched with that Dallas Lincoln team. So. Thank you guys for joining in with us, and we'll see you tomorrow night. Live stream with the boys basketball senior night, and then soccer on Wednesday. Have a great night.